These are the seven things I wish I knew when I started music production. So the first thing is starting with the basics. As a beginner, we get super excited on how to make Drake beats and how to do reverse flip flop phase EDM growls. But the problem is if you don't start with the basics, your house will fall apart. It's kind of like the biblical parable. A house built on sand will collapse eventually. So when you guys are learning music production, you have to build on a solid foundation. It's boring. It's tedious. Nobody cares to really go over the basics and they think they're above beginner. I can guarantee you a lot of you guys who watch these videos on my channel at Busy Works Beats, you guys think that you're intermediate. And if I sent you through a test where I really drilled you and in, in to see where your skill set is, most of you guys are actually two out of 10. You guys think you're five and sevens, but you're really two out of 10. And that misjudgment makes you think you know more than you actually know. And if I really drill down and try your skills, you're a two and that's okay. I, I don't, the one thing you need to understand in the beginning is that arrogance is over evaluating your skill set or your ability. Okay. So you don't want to be arrogant in music production. It doesn't mean that you need to know everything. It just means a lot of us tend to overly estimate our actual skill set. So the first pillar of everything I'm about to show you today is all about starting with the basics. Do not jump too far. Here's what happens. And I'll be short about this. When you don't start with the basics, you go into advanced material. And let's say you're learning EDM growls. Okay. For example, so you learn about, you know, distorted comb filters. You learn about, you know, modulation envelopes. You learn about serum. You learn about all these things. And then you go to the next step and you're like, what's next? So you learn these, these tips here and there, but you don't know how to create from the foundation. So it's like learning how to build a shovel. And now you're like, okay, I don't know how to build any other garden tools except the shovel. And I don't even know the foundations of how to plant gardens and make soil actually work. So now you're just stuck with the shovel and you don't know anything else. So I've seen it too many times. What happens though, and I'll, this is the last point to this first point, is that when you jump too far, subconsciously, when you deal with frustration, you shut down. Okay. So in the beginning, a lot of us are trying to be like, masterful music productions, you know, you just think you could do everything right away. It's kind of like going to the gym, benching 500 pounds. You might be able to get a one hundredth of a rep in, but the next day your body's going to be torn to shreds because your body wasn't conditioned to take on that much weight. And the same thing happens with music production skills is if you don't start with the basics and you jump too far, the first time you come into like an area of un misunderstanding or you just don't can't figure it out, your body's just going to shut down and you're not going to receive information anymore. And it's actually going to stop you from learning. So the worst thing you could do is jump too far in the beginning. OK, it's like trying to swim in the deep end and you haven't even learned to you, to do the doggy paddle yet. OK, so with all that out the way, because I've taught over a million producers around the world. So I'm going to work with Drake, Kanye West, Post Malone, Ariana Grande, French Montana, Young Thug, YG, Trippy Red, J. Cole, if I didn't already say that, I'm starting to repeat myself. Uh, but a lot of folks, okay, and I've seen this over and over and over and over and over. I get it. You're enthusiastic. You want to learn how to do this thing. That's really cool. The problem is, you know, some of the stuff that is the stuff you need to learn isn't as cool or doesn't look as exciting, okay? But you have to get the foundations right. If you guys want the foundations, it's completely free. Just go to busyworksbeats.com slash premium. I will guide you through those foundations. I'm one of the only people who will take the time to guide you through these foundations because it requires a lot of insight on the whole process of music production, you know, to, in order to teach that fundamental level. Okay. So with all that being said, that's the biggest thing. Okay. That I wish I knew when I started music production, because I was learning multi-band compression and I applied it to like everything all the time. Okay. So the second thing I wish I knew earlier was referencing existing songs and sounds. So for example, I'm not going to play the song because it's okay. But what you can do is drag a song into your DAW. Make sure you get rid of this beginning silence to do that. Grab this little slip tool, hit alt, left click, and just make sure that that audio does not have a silence in the beginning. So now what you could do is figure out the tempo of this track. And there's various ways to find tempo. We're not going to go through everything right now. But what you can do is listen to the track, just hit space bar and play the track. And then go to song mode, hit play. And what I like to do is just right click and tap out. Go to your tempo, right click. And where's it at? Tap out your tempo. Okay, so I'll hit space and then I'll go tap. It'll be like, dun, 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 dun. And then I'll tap out the tempo and it will adjust accordingly. And then from this point, now again, I'm roughly uh, just going off of roughly. But what you could do here is go to the top left and add what are called time markers. So here you can label out the sections of a song. This is really important because this will help you with your arrangement and your structure of your song. 
I've already done this in our Beatmaker Blueprint. If you go to busyworksbeats.com slash Beatmaker, that's the Beatmaker Blueprint. I've done this for all the Billboard hip hop t- uh, songs, Doja Cat, Lil Durk. Uh, I forget who else was in the Billboard charts. OK, so I already mapped all that stuff out for you. OK, so click there and then click here. You could do another time marker and let's call this hook, for example. So now you'll start to learn song structure. So when you go to make your beat, you could just make sure that your patterns don't go beyond a certain point if you're trying to sound like a specific song. I think the biggest thing happens in music production is we get into these ISO chambers where we think we're making a future type beat, but we don't reference our songs and our sounds and our structure to the future type beat, okay? And then we go to make our beat all the way through, and then we export it, and we're like, why doesn't this sound like future? It's because we weren't checking along the way. So it's like form and, and going to the gym. Like if you're not checking your form with a, a teacher or somebody who can show you a better form, you're always going to just be doing your own thing. And then you'll realize how far off you are. You need to have a measuring stick. If you're trying to learn music production, I think referencing is the fastest way to learn. Some of the quickest ways I've learned was remaking beats, um, Eminem's, uh, you know, bad guy beat, uh, t- uh, Jay-Z's Tom Ford beat. I've remade a lot of beats and just learning the structure and the sound selection and what they did to get a specific sound, it taught me so much. Another cool thing when you learn and remake beats, not that you have to, is that you'll start to, you'll have this inner thing where your brain will just find things. It will take time, but your brain will start to seek out things and find things. And that becomes a skill set to where you're like, that's not the snare, that's not the snare. Let me keep looking. That's not the snare, that's not the snare. Or you'll go through sounds and you'll be like, wow, okay, this is the sound. And you'll start shaping it to sound like the original sound that you heard. You'll learn more and more and more about the nuances of music production and sound design that way as well and sound selection. So second tip here is just referencing existing songs and sounds. The third tip I wish I knew (laughs) when I was learning music production is translating from your mind. So when I was in the beginning stages, I used to do this a lot. Okay. Like I used to whistle out melodies. My grandpa used to uh, whistle and I just learned whistling from him, just being around him. So I will go, You know, I just whistle a melody and then I would keep doing that until I drew in all the notes. And that's how my early stages of writing melody were. Then here's a bad habit, not a bad habit. I don't want to say anything's bad or good. A habit that we learn as music producers is to draw in notes. Now, you may think this is like, uh, what's the word? It has no harm. But the problem is we start to rely on the computer to make the melody for us. And that's the issue. A lot of you guys have beat block because you don't have an idea to begin with. It sounds stupid, but, you know, think about the old times. You had to rent studio time before you could even record your song. So that means you would go into a studio. You would already have a song in your head. You would already have it practiced. You would already have it laid out. And then by the time you go in the studio, you would go to record. So a technique you can use to kind of get yourself in that mindset is charge yourself for your studio time. Imagine that your computer is a music studio. How much would you charge per hour to let somebody use your music studio? Now charge yourself that amount per hour. So if you're not producing in that amount of time, meaning creating something, then you are literally not translate. It'll force you to start translating existing ideas. Now you have to separate the time when you're going to create a product versus the time where you're experimenting. And once you mentally separate experimentation time where you can get weird and do weird things and do sound design and research, that's the time you don't have to charge yourself. But the time when you're trying to make a beat and translate an idea, charge yourself, it will make you sharpen your skills, get faster, all those different things. Okay, and you'll be able to separate mentally the separation of producing producing a product versus trying to learn. Okay, and just accept this. You you're gonna have to learn as you go. Okay, so translate those melodies from your head. That's the ultimate melody machine. Even Metro Boomin said there's a melody. I said something on Twitter. I was like, does anybody else hear like in a nonstop radio station in their head? Metro Boomin said yes. So he agrees on that one. Uh, The fourth thing I wish I knew in the beginning is learning expression and articulation. So what I mean by this is that certain sounds, like for example, this 3X OSC, you play it and that's it. It just has the note, that's it. Now, if I'm playing a Xenology note, that's the same note. If I play harder, it plays more expressive. If I had the mod wheel, now in this case, the mod wheel isn't turned on. So in this case, I'll show you guys how to do that real quick. Go to the top left, go to Browse. Parameters, scroll down until you see MIDI CC number one, right click link to controller and move your mod wheel. Sometimes FL unlinks the controllers. I don't know why, but it just does. 
Also, you can go to your plugin settings, right, change the range to 12, right click link to controller, move your pitch wheel. So if you're using a MIDI controller now, I can turn this into this. Now you can't hear the difference because there's no vibrato on it, but Okay, and then you could use your pitch wheel. Now the sound becomes more expressive, and that's something that I didn't fully understand until I grasped sound design to a high level. Expression is just as important as the note. So it's melodies way more than just hitting a note. It's also how it's played. You know, if you hit a piano string hard, it's going to go bang. But if you hit it softly, it's going to go doom. two different tones. OK, they have two different harmonic uh, structures. So I know I'm saying a lot, but I want you guys to fully take this stuff in because I've learned this from teaching millions of producers around the world. So the next thing here is following courses. I think a lot of folks, they talk down on courses because they just don't want to acknowledge their ignorance. They just don't want to acknowledge the fact that they don't know something. So they have to demonize it. I did this in the beginning. I used to say, you don't need music theory for melodies. Now, were my melodies the greatest? No, <laughs> I didn't know that until I learned music theory. Because now I can say, OK, I want to play a minor ninth chord or minor seventh chord in this case. And I know a sound that I can create simply by playing what I understand. I can even show you how to build a chord not knowing anything about music theory. So for example, I'm going to close my eyes here, open up the piano roll, close my eyes, land on the note. We were at E. You don't even need to know what this note is. So let's say you want to make a minor ninth chord. There's a chord code for it, 0, 3, 7, 10, 14. Wherever you land, it's called the zero point. This is the point of rest. Okay, so it's zero. You just count up your keyboard. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now we're counting up what are called semitones, not scale degrees to be uh, clear. So it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That will always create a minor ninth chord no matter what. That took two seconds to learn music theory. And I used to demonize it because I just didn't understand it eight years, you know, nine years ago, whenever I started. Now I can say, okay, I know what a diminished chord is, an augmented chord. I know dominant chords. I know why they're used. I know mediant chords, submediant, excuse me, subdominant chords. I know uh, secondary dominant chords is what I meant to say. I know dominant chords, secondary dominant chords, parallel scales, key modulation, scale modulation. I know how to go out of key on purpose. So these are all things that you learn in courses. Yes, you can watch this YouTube video, that YouTube video, but it's similar to building a house and just putting one corner of the house and then putting another corner, but then you're missing the other two corners. The house isn't going to stand up. OK, so when you guys are learning music production, you need to understand that you have to have a solid foundation. There's only a few people who will teach you that solid foundation. Now, you can go to Berkeley if you get accepted, that is. And if you want to pay the thousands of dollars it is per year to even go to Berkeley. OK, so that's two hurdles. You got to be good to get in and you have to pay thousands and thousands of dollars. So I came up with an altered you know, solution to say, go to busyworksbeats.com slash premium for one thousandth of the price you can get in. You can even get in for free right now. You can access all of my courses for free. So when people tell you, oh, games gatekeeping, Busyworks Beats is making you do all this just because it's like I give you free access. So if you like it, you can stay on. If not, you can just accept the free training. Just go to busyworksbeats.com slash premium. I think courses are extremely important because courses you're thinking most people teach courses as if it's just this thing to get, you know, somebody fame and to get them noticed and all this type of stuff in science. You know, I studied pre-med at Villanova University and I was a uh, science. Um, I got a science scholarship. So basically in science, they do research papers to even access the research papers. You have to pay hundreds of dollars to find out if people's research even worked. Ninety nine percent of the time research is the research wasn't a successful research, but it found something out that was important. That's what research is about. And it takes multiple, 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 multiple papers in order to chisel down the truth of something. And in music production, people tend to demonize it again because they're not coming from this knowledgeable base. You know, these are 
you know, when people think about musicians, they think poor, broke, stupid, starving artist, you know, who's just a bum on the street who wants to play guitar. That's not who we are. You know, music producers want to elevate their craft. They want to become better. And, you know, we're basically scientists of waveforms. That's what we are. So when we have people tell us, you know, to devalue ourselves and not research and not study and not be up on the newest thing because it'll hinder our whatever, you know, it's just that's out of scarcity and fear, you know, and an old identity that they gave musicians and music producers. So I want you guys to elevate yourselves. And in order to do that, you have to get people's research. I've done the hard research, so you don't have to. Okay, so you can save the time. So you don't have to go to university just to find out that what they teach is what I've been teaching. And in fact, universities grab my material to teach their students. So for those who don't understand. Okay, so let's move forward here. The sixth one is learning music theory. I kind of already covered this, but... Instead of going one note by, you know, how I used to do it, and I remember doing this vividly, is I didn't know where to start or where to go. So I would just click a note. I'd be like, dun, dun, and then I'd be like, okay, I don't know where, I didn't know where to go from that point. So I would just click in notes. And the problem with this would be, it would be that the problem that came up would be that when it came to the bass or the chords, it would always feel stuck in that it wasn't moving. Okay, because I never applied music theory principles to my actual notes. So I could draw notes from my head, but the problem is I didn't know how to make it seem like it's going somewhere. That's where music theory comes into play, solving those problems and making the song feel like it's moving forward as opposed to just repeating this small little box of an idea. And the sixth thing I wish I knew when I first started music production is that in hip hop, at least, the drum sounds are 95% of the actual sound. So if you don't have the right drums, you're not going to get there. Okay. A lot of us are trying to turn stock drums. Like, let me just show you guys the difference real quick. And I'm not going to eat up too much time. I just want you to understand when we first started NFL, this is years and years ago. Uh, but the, the hip hop drum kit, listen to the hip hop drum kit. Now, some of these are still used like this hi-hat people still use. These kicks sound nothing like the kicks that we use today. So we were trying to morph these kicks into something that it wasn't. You know, it's, it's, it's like trying to turn a dolphin into a whale. You know, we were trying to force something into another thing that it just wasn't going to be. And so the first thing I needed to learn, which was years later, that one, I needed to turn my drums up because I used to have them down for the most part. And two, I just didn't have the right drum sounds. The moment you get the right drum sounds, you're like, this is how easy it is. I just click this hi-hat and that's it and you just drag that clap and that's it so but the problem is trying to find those sounds if you guys struggle with sounds just go to our discord discord.gg slash busy beats we have tons of drum kits for you in the 77 drum kits i'll leave all the links below i just want you guys to learn and expand okay so these are the things i wish i knew when i first started music production go to busyworksbeats.com slash premium to learn a lot more peace out guys